On this episode of OBD for Everyone, we're going to be using these inexpensive Wi-Fi scanners, an iPhone app called OBD Fusion, to connect, add some gauges, and make it talk faster. The first step is to plug in our Wi-Fi OBD2 scanner into the car's diagnostic port. Now these ports are typically located on the driver's side, kind of at the bottom of the dash. I have the engine running so we can view live data. The first step is to connect to the Wi-Fi hotspot our OBD scanner has created. So to do that, we go to settings and under Wi-Fi, we can see right there, Wi-Fi OBD2. So we've touched that, we're going to connect. And if you look underneath it, it says security recommendation. That's just a warning telling us that, hey, this device has no password. So it's easy to connect to, but it means anybody can connect to it. So that's fine for now. Going to hit the home button. And I'm gonna come back here to our OBD for everyone folder, and I'm gonna start up OBD Fusion. Since this is the first time we're connecting, there's just a couple things I wanna check. I'll go to preferences and under communications, and I wanna make sure our type is Wi-Fi because that's our OBD scanner. If your scanner is different, then pick the best option that you have here. So we are Wi-Fi, we're good to go there. And also the device. Um, OBD Fusion supports multiple devices. The one I have, it's a $23 Elm 327 OBD scanner, and that's why I've got that selected there. Okay, we can back out here. Something else you can check is fast polling. That will allow our device to pull the information from the ECU, from the engine computer, as fast as possible, okay? And we can specify a dwell time. So if you're having some difficulties connecting, you can try changing your dwell time. And this is really all dependent upon the quality of your Elm 327 scanner. We'll back up here, we'll back up here. The other thing you may wanna check are your units. So I live in Canada, so I like everything to be in the metric system. We'll back out here back out here and we're back to our settings page and now we can connect we'll touch connect all right at the top left there we can see it shows connected so now let's have a look at some live data we'll go to a dashboard here we can see our engine temperature is 81 degrees celsius our mass airflow is zero and that's because the mass airflow PID which is the parameter ID it's different than most cars under battery, we can see we get about 13.1 volts, so that's good there. Our vehicle speed is zero. Engine RPM is about 650 some odd RPM. And our fuel rate is also zero because generally the fuel rate is a calculated PID based upon the airflow through the engine. And because that's zero, it's also zero. Fine. Now there's two more built-in dashboards. Here we can see fuel rate, O2 sensor voltage, instant fuel economy, vehicle speed, O2 sensor one voltage, as well as our total fuel economy. A lot of the items are zero because different cars and different engine computers have different parameters and they're not all the same. So I'm not gonna worry about that right here because we're gonna make our own dashboard to get exactly what we want. So let's go to have a look at the next one. And on the screen here, it's showing us our boost pressure. Now, the G37 does not have a turbo or a supercharger. It's just looking at the manifold absolute pressure sensor, the MAP sensor, and it's telling us it's currently minus 15 kilopascals. The other two gauges on the right-hand side, those gauges are from the iPad or iPhone. They're the accelerometers that are used to determine acceleration in the X and Y axis. However, let's make our own dash. So to do that, we will touch menu and we'll say add dashboard. Perfect. Now let's add a gauge. I want to add a tack. So we'll go to menu and say add display. Gonna make that a radial gauge. We're gonna go back and there's our gauge. Perfect. But we don't want vehicle speed. We want engine RPM. So we will touch and hold. And then under display configuration and under PID, we can select different PIDs. And our PID that we're looking for for engine speed, it is a SAE PID. So we'll touch that right there. And what we want is engine RPM, which is right here. We'll go back and back and back and back once more. And there's our engine RPM. However, it looks to be a mess. It goes from zero to 8,192. It looks very cluttered. Let's clean it up. Again, we'll touch and hold. We go back to display configuration. We are going to set the multiplier to be times a thousand. 
And we're also going to change the maximum just to 8,000 for a nice even number. And we'll go back and back, and that looks much better. Now, wouldn't it be nice to have a red line on the G37? The red line on the tachometer should be 7,500 RPM. So let's add that. We will push and hold. We will go to style. We will touch range. And at the very bottom, we're going to add a range. Let's scroll that up here. And it's put it in for us already, 7,200 to 8,000 RPM. But let's just get that a bit more closer to 75. Oh, you can't get much closer than that. That's perfect. So we'll hit back, back. And there is our tack. was nice and clean and our red line. Now let's also add our engine cooler temperature. We'll go to menu and we'll say add display and we're gonna do a digital gauge and touch back. And again, there's our vehicle speed, but we want engine cooler temperature. So we'll change it the same way. We'll touch and hold. We'll go to display configuration, PID, SAE PID, and we are going to pick engine coolant temperature. I'm gonna go back and back and back again and back again. And there's our engine coolant temperature. Now, we really don't need the name to be quite so long and we don't need decimal points on this. So let's go clean that up a little bit. We will touch and hold, go over here to display configuration. And at the very bottom, it says number of decimals. We'll put that to zero. We'll go back here. And the title, we're gonna change that E C N T. And hit back and back. And there we are right there. Now we're almost done. Touch and hold. Let's just move this. And we're gonna do drag and move right to there. And you know what? Let's also go to size and location. And let's make that gauge bigger. I'm gonna make that 60 and 60. Let's go back and back. Beautiful. So let's just move that a little bit and I'll just drag it over here like this. Um, but I don't want the coolant gauge on top of the engine RPM gauge. So let's just push and hold and say bring to front. And there we have it, our custom dashboard. It's got our engine coolant temperature and our engine RPM with the red line at 7,500 RPM. And it's nice and clean, it's not cluttered. We can easily read this at a glance. And that's your introduction to OBD Fusion. We've got more videos coming. We're going to be getting into diagnostics. We're going to check emissions. We're going to look at fuel trims. There's a whole bunch of stuff this app can do. It's really, really good. It's probably one of my favorite OBD apps that I use.